I'm going to say a lot of negative things today, but I don't want you to think I hate this book. I don't. Really. A lot of my criticisms are actually going to be about the culture that produced it. First, uh, let me explain what I have here. Uh, I recently started a new job, and my new boss gave me this book to read so I would understand the process of a design sprint. At my new company, they use a modified version of this. Uh, the author is a product manager who ended up at Google Ventures, the venture capital arm of Google. He devised the design sprint, which is really uh, just a method to tackle a big business problem and get a test performed in five days. Thanks to his job with Google Ventures, uh, he had the opportunity to use his design sprint method in many different corporate environments. Uh, his involvement in consulting with these companies did double duty as an unofficial experiment for him to refine his method. And after all those years of refinement, we have this book. In terms of readability, uh, the book flows wonderfully. I read it relatively quickly. Uh, there were no parts where I got bogged down in terminology or got lost in the description. He wrote this using very natural speech. Uh, too natural, though, for my taste. Uh, I can only read so many asides or rhetorical questions before I can't help but roll my eyes. To me, it just smacks of trying too hard to be friendly and cool. Like when you bring in the 30-something guest speaker to talk to high school students about sex, so he grabs a chair and sits in it backwards to prove he's one of the cool adults. I will say, though, this book is is a perfect product of Silicon Valley culture. Living here, working here is just slowly eroding my soul. Because of the large number of engineers and the way they approach work, you get a culture that reduces problem solving to a series of repeatable steps. It's very logical for sure, but when you apply this to everything, it's exhausting. At least I find it so. I don't want my life to be reduced to a series of repeatable steps. I don't need every moment to be its most efficient. I want the freedom, even if it's just an illusion, to do what I want in the moment. This book, Sprint, is exasperating in its detail. You know, <laughs> somehow, I always want to pronounce it with that exclamation. It feels unnatural to treat it like a normal word. Sprint! is more than just advice on decision-making or how to run a work session. It goes down into such minutia of how many post-it notepads you should bring to your design sprint. Use whiteboard markers, not Sharpies. The book tells you the exact number of dot stickers you should bring and colors to choose when you buy those dot stickers. The book actually tells you when to go to lunch. I really despise this culture that boils everything down into mindless steps that you repeat, repeat, repeat thoughtlessly. This culture just worships process, and that is exactly the hubris of Silicon Valley. These people will try really hard to figure out a process that will always solve the problem and force it on everyone else so they shut their brains off and just follow these steps again and again. Because people are just too stupid to be expected to think for themselves. We here in Silicon Valley, at Google or Facebook or Slack or every other faceless tech company, need to give the unwashed mouth breathers steps to blindly follow. It's for their own good. Oh, but anyway, a design sprint is a process-oriented method of forcing decision-making. It's not really a revelation. Most of his steps are designed to push past the obstacles that bog you down, and that's helpful. You don't want to get stuck obsessing over some minor point or end up arguing all day about some whatever because two people can't let it go. Yet, I also don't want to buy a time timer to measure discussions down to the minute. Talking has a purpose. These interminable discussions aren't a complete waste of time. 
and they aren't even 100% about finding a solution. Much of that so-called hot air is about getting buy-in from your team. If people don't feel they have fleshed out a problem, they won't be confident in in the solution you're pushing. And as I think back on the entire five-day process, I think that's what this is designed to do. A design sprint is supposed to short-circuit the lack of buy-in by keeping people focused on each heavily timed incremental step. If you keep the group jumping from question A to question B to task C to group review D, all the while your time timer is ticking away very publicly, your group doesn't really have time to push back or consider whether this whole enterprise is worth it. So you go along, and before you know it, you're watching your user test happen. Now yes, I poo-pooed this a lot, but I actually don't think this is worthless. I just don't want to be such a slave to this exhaustively defined process. There is a benefit to forcing decision making along. Sometimes you have a serious time crunch and you need to move things forward without being able to give everyone a voice. Some of these ideas are good for demolishing those roadblocks. Uh, One thing I noticed was how heavily he falls upon the authority of the decider. Uh, When you form your design sprint, you're supposed to have at least one person with real authority over the product. And and depending upon how big or small your project, you know, that could be the product owner or even all the way up to the CEO. Whenever discussion took more than a few minutes, you as the facilitator are supposed to prompt the decider to make the call and everyone else is supposed to shut up about it. If you want to read deeply into this culture, well, there's the authoritarian streak that seems to emanate from Silicon Valley. All that said, do I find the book valuable? Yes, somewhat. There are some good bits of information and ideas you can pick out and use if you're a product manager. I wouldn't want to follow each and every word, though. The book actually tells you to only have light and healthy foods for lunch to keep up the group's energy into the afternoon. Am I really supposed to police what everyone eats? No, Bill, the 45-year-old senior manager with three kids who has worked here for eight years. Who do you think you are, an adult? You're not allowed to have that burrito. Order the kale quinoa salad instead. So, that's that. Thankfully, the book is done, and now I can move on to something more entertaining. I hate having to do reading for work. It feels like such an intrusion into my leisure. I mean, I know there's personal value in developing yourself, but still. It just makes something fun into drudgery. That's why I spent two weeks on this book. Uh, I could have finished it in half the time if it didn't feel like such an assignment. Uh, But anyway, like, comment, and subscribe, please, before YouTube deletes me for having no commercial value. I'll be back again with another video as soon as I can.